Imagine this. You're at the most magical moment of your life, surrounded by loved ones, and just as you're about to step into your first dance as a married couple, chaos erupts. A black CIA undercover agent, dressed to the nines, is yanked away in handcuffs by a police officer, accused of a crime he didn't commit. Shock, disbelief, and outrage ripple through the crowd as the drama unfolds, but what happens next will stun you and could change the way we view justice and racial profiling forever. The sun cast a golden hue over the grand reception hall, illuminating a space that was transformed into a dreamlike setting for Michael and Tanya's wedding. The scent of fresh flowers and gourmet dishes filled the air. Guests, elegantly dressed, clinked glasses of sparkling champagne, their laughter harmonizing with the soft strains of a live jazz band. Michael Johnson, a distinguished CIA undercover agent, stood beaming as he exchanged vows with Tanya, his radiant bride. The ceremony was a testament to their love, and the celebration that followed was nothing short of spectacular. As they danced their first dance, the room seemed to shimmer with joy. The bride's gown sparkled under the chandeliers, and the groom's smile was a reflection of pure happiness. The reception was a symphony of clinking glasses, heartfelt toasts, and delectable cuisine. Guests swirled around the dance floor, their faces lit with joy. But as Michael and Tanya prepared for their second dance, the joyous atmosphere was shattered. The doors to the reception hall burst open with a jarring clamor. Two police officers barged in, their heavy footsteps thudding across the marble floor. The music screeched to a halt, and a cold hush fell over the crowd. Guests exchanged puzzled glances as the officers scanned the room with steely eyes. Michael Johnson? One officer demanded, his voice echoing ominously. Michael's heart skipped a beat. He looked around in disbelief. Yes, that's me, he said cautiously, moving towards them. What's going on? Without warning, the officer seized Michael's arm and yanked him away from Tanya. The bride's eyes widened in horror as she realized what was happening. Michael, what's going on? She cried out, rushing to his side. You're under arrest for suspicion of shoplifting, the officer said, his voice devoid of empathy. The room erupted into gasps and murmurs. Michael, in his tuxedo, was a stark contrast to the scruffy shoplifter the officers were describing. He tried to reason with them, his voice calm but tinged with frustration. This is a mistake. I've been here all day. I work for the CIA. I'm not a thief. The officer's face was a mask of indifference. You fit the description. We need to take you in for questioning. Tanya, shaking with a mix of anger and disbelief, stood by her husband, pleading with the officers. This is ridiculous. He's been with me the entire time. We have dozens of witnesses. How could you do this? One of Michael's groomsmen, a lawyer named James, stepped forward. His voice was firm as he addressed the officers. You're making a grave mistake. The security footage from the store will prove that Michael wasn't there. Let him go. The officers ignored James's pleas, pushing Michael towards the exit. The crowd was in uproar, their festive mood replaced by a wave of collective outrage. Phones were out, cameras rolling, capturing every moment of this shocking turn of events. As they dragged Michael out, his mother, overcome with emotion, begged them to reconsider. Please, my son is innocent. You can't do this. The officers remained unmoved, their actions fueled by bias rather than evidence. Outside, the situation continued to escalate. The venue security team quickly gathered evidence, including surveillance footage from the nearby store. The video clearly showed the suspect was not Michael, but a different person entirely. Back in the reception hall, the mood was a storm of confusion and anger. Guests were on their phones, furiously tweeting and posting about the injustice unfolding before their eyes. The tension was palpable as the footage was reviewed and verified. One of the guests, a tech-savvy friend of Michael's, rushed to the officers with a tablet showing the surveillance footage. Look at this, he shouted. This isn't Michael. You've got the wrong guy. The officer's face turned a ghostly shade as he watched the footage. His previous bravado evaporated, replaced by visible distress. He stammered. I, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Michael, now standing outside the venue, watched as the officer fumbled with the handcuffs, attempting to remove them. The scene was captured on countless phones, the glaring evidence of an unwarranted arrest making its way across social media. The officer, now a figure of regret and humiliation, approached Michael. His hands trembled as he tried to apologize. 
I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. I just... You fit the description. Michael's face was a mask of steely resolve. It's not about fitting a description. It's about racial profiling and the systemic issues that allow this kind of mistake to happen. The officer's apologies continued, but they fell flat against the backdrop of the day's events. The guests, once celebrating, now stood united in their outrage, their voices demanding justice and accountability. As the officer left, his badge and gun confiscated, the scene was a vivid reminder of the biases that still pervade society. Michael's wedding, a day meant to celebrate love, had become a stark lesson in the realities of racial injustice. The story quickly gained traction in the media. Headlines blared with shocking updates, and social media erupted with demands for justice. Hashtags like hashish justice for Michael and end racial profiling took over Twitter and Instagram. The story was everywhere, sparking conversations about the prevalence of racial bias in policing. If you've watched this far, leave a 100 in the comments section because you are type of person that likes to finish what they started. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to get notified whenever we drop new videos. Now back to the story. The local police department faced intense scrutiny. Within hours, the mayor issued a public apology, acknowledging the department's failure. An immediate investigation was launched and the officer responsible was suspended without pay. The department pledged to implement new training programs and reforms. Michael, though still reeling from the events, addressed the media with a calm but resolute demeanor. What happened to me today is not an isolated incident. It's a part of a larger problem that needs to be addressed. We need systemic change and accountability. The public outcry led to significant changes in local policing policies. New measures were put in place, including mandatory implicit bias training and a civilian oversight board to monitor police conduct. The community's response was a powerful testament to the impact of collective action. In the aftermath, Michael and Tanya focused on turning their ordeal into a force for good. They established the Johnson Justice Foundation, dedicated to providing legal support for victims of racial profiling and police brutality. Their foundation also worked to promote awareness and education about racial biases. Michael's story became a symbol of resilience and a catalyst for change. The couple's dedication to justice resonated widely, and their efforts contributed to ongoing conversations about reform in law enforcement practices. The foundation organized community forums, workshops, and advocacy events, fostering dialogue about race and justice. Their mission was clear to ensure that incidents like the one they experienced would not be repeated and to work toward a more equitable society. Michael and Tanya's wedding day was marred by a painful reminder of the biases that exist within our society. But their story also stands as a beacon of hope, demonstrating that voices united for justice can lead to real change. The incident was a wake-up call for many highlighting the urgent need for continued efforts to combat racial profiling and police brutality. It's a call to action for all of us to be vigilant, to speak out against injustice, and to support reforms that promote fairness and equality. What can you do to help end racial profiling and support victims of injustice? Get involved, educate yourself, and advocate for change. Together, we can make a difference and ensure that every person is treated with dignity and respect no matter the color of their skin.